Hey everyone, Ryan here. In this video, we'll take a look at how to disable a field based on a condition being met. So on the screen here, you will see I have numerous um, various fields here. So dropdowns, toggle, date, numbers, even text fields. So what I'll do is I have a specify reason text field beside each. If a certain condition is met, we'll disable that um, specify reason text field. So this will give you an idea of how to disable fields on your end using the various controls that are available in a Canvas app. So what we'll focus on first is the dropdown and we'll use the Dataverse option set. And the reason why is it's, it's different than a local collection. So if I go to the items list here, you will see that I have choices and I have my option set, which is pulled in directly from Dataverse. So right now, the specify reason be text field beside it is currently just edit mode. So that's the default mode when you drop a text input or any field onto the, um, onto the form here, that's an input. So what we're going to do is make a condition to say, if this dropdown field is canceled, we will make this editable, otherwise it's disabled. So to do that, what we will do is we'll grab the name here on the left. So we'll grab the name, we'll go to the properties window, and we'll just copy that since we have numerous fields on the form here. And what we'll do is saying if the selected, and we're going to say value equals, and we have to reference the option set um, that's pulled in from Dataverse. So in this case, it's account status and you see that I have it account status option set. So what we'll say that if it's canceled, we're going to show, um, we're going to have this text box to the right to be enabled. So it'll be edit, otherwise it will be disabled. So if I go and press play here, click the drop down, go to in progress, go to canceled, it's enabled. So you see every other condition um, where it's not canceled, it is disabled for us. Now let's do the same thing for the other dropdown I have here. Now in this case, I'm using a local collection. So this is a bit different. So to do that, I'll grab the name. So I'll go to the properties window, grab the name of the dropdown. And what I will do here is say if the selected and if I click the dot here, you'll see I have description. And the reason why is if I go to my on start, this is where I made that account status collection. Okay, and the column that I have for it is description. So if I go back to here and I go to description, and what I could say is it equals canceled. So I can use a text comparison here. So this will be in this case, edit, otherwise it will be disabled. So now if I go and I press Alt and I go through each option, you'll see that it's enabled when it's canceled, Others, otherwise it's disabled. So let's take a look at a toggle. This is actually a bit more simple. And the reason why is with a toggle, it can either be true or false. So in this case, what I can do is I can say, if I grab the name here first, so I could do the if condition and I could say value. Now, what I want is if it's set to active, I want it to be disabled. Otherwise, it will be enabled. So if it's active, it will be disabled. Otherwise, display mode will be edit. So here, if I press Alt, if I go to inactive, it's enabled for use. Otherwise, it's disabled. So let's go to a date parameter and what we can do there. Um, it's, it's pretty similar. And what we'll do in this case is if the date happens to be prior to today's date, we will enable the specify reason Otherwise, it will be disabled. So in this case, 
we will use our if condition here and we'll say selected date. Okay, so that will always give you the date that's selected in the control. And what we'll say if it, it's before today, we're going to have it editable in this case. So display mode edit, otherwise disabled. So here we see that it is actually before today. If I go to, let's say, um, you know, a future date, it's disabled. And if I go to an older date, it's enabled for us to specify a reason. And the last two items that we have are text fields. So one is currently set up as a numeric input here, and the other one is just simple text. So these are a lot simpler. So what you can do here, we'll grab the name, and what we will do is say if dot text. And now since we're using a numeric value, we have to use the value function to convert it to a numeric value. So if I put my mouse over this beside it, well, I actually don't see it right now, but you would see you know, the number 67 here and you'll see the data type is number. So what we're going to say is if it's above 10, we're going to require the user to specify a reason. So we'll say display mode edit. Otherwise it's display mode dot disabled. So if I go back to here, and if I go back and I'll press play here. So if I go to, let's say four, you will see that it's disabled. And if I go to a numeric value above 10, you will see that it's enabled for use. And the last one here that we will use is this text field down here. So to do this, what we need to do is if we go to the control, the text input, what we can say is if text value equals, and I'm going to specify a value here. In this case, it's canceled. I'm going to say display mode dot edit. Otherwise, it's going to be disabled. So from here, if I go and I enter any value, it's disabled. But if I specify, in this case, canceled, it is enabled. So based on going on through all these controls here, hopefully this gives you an idea of how to disable other fields in your app based on certain conditions being met with a dropdown, toggle, date, or even a text input as well.